ओके बाय एवरीबॉडी टेक केयर आज कम थी आपको दूसरी चाय बहुत अच्छी लगती है आज वन कम थी ये
सॉरी फॉर कीप यू वेटिंग शैल बी स्टार्ट द क्लास नाउ एवरीबडी इज माई वॉइस ऑडिबल टू ऑल ओके नॉट एन इश्यू आई सिंस आई एम लेट इन द क्लास लिटिल बिट सो आई कैन एक्सटेंड द क्लास एट द लास्ट सो आर टू डेज क्लास टॉपिक्स फॉर टू डेज क्लास दिस टॉपिक इज बेसिकली रिलेटेड टू द सब्जेक्ट मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्सेज सो द टॉपिक्स विच वी आर कवरिंग इन टू डेज क्लास द मेजर टू topics which we are seeing in today's class number 1 is the participation and number 2 is the empowerment these are the two topics on which today's class is based so as you all know what do you what do you mean by participation participation means involvement involvement in certain activity whenever you are working for certain objectives whenever you are working for certain common objectives you participate whenever you want to learn something new from somebody you participate so at every point of life you participate you yes taking part that's right so suppose you you have an invitation for some function some birthday party so you participate you take part so to learn something new to meet new friends meeting somebody working together as a team uh, for common for a, achieving a common objective you participate so at every that's why we can say that at every phase of life or at every point we need to participate just a second so let's before starting let's have a 2 minute small video for you let's watch everybody watch this video organizational success through an empowered workforce in the next few minutes We will show you how using visualization solutions by Nakisa can empower your employees to contribute towards the success of your organization. Successful organizations are able to create a sustainable workforce with high levels of talent retention and productivity. They achieve this by empowering their workforce through engagement and development that align with business strategy. Nakisa offers two solution suites to optimize the impact of your workforce: org visualization by Nakisa and talent visualization by Nakisa. Each suite includes a module targeted at empowering your workforce. Let's take a closer look at each of these modules in action. Org visualization by Nakisa includes Nakisa org chart. Here's how John used Nakisa org chart at Swift Feet Inc. a global footwear retailer to communicate and collaborate with his peers to achieve a successful project result John has just joined Swift Feet as a project manager for e-commerce initiatives one of John's new colleagues tells him that Swift Feet's org chart has a great feature called social link she explains that social link is useful for finding subject matter experts for business needs and that it is also a good way to get to know people socially. She encourages him to create his personal profile. John creates his social link profile instantly by downloading information that already exists in his LinkedIn account. John has created his profile and it is now available for his colleagues to view. Robert, a financial consultant at Swift Feet Inc. receives a new employee introduction bulletin from the company's HR department. It points him towards John's social link profile. He notices that they attended the same school. Robert introduces himself to John and their mutual experiences allow for a friendly first meeting. During their conversation, John mentions that he is seeking someone that can validate the localized Japanese website for language and cultural nuances. 
Robert knows of a social link group called Asian Foodies. He advises John to use directory to track down the group's profile. John finds the group and identifies Tomo as the group's organizer. From her profile, he sees that she is the marketing coordinator, a native Japanese speaker, and has experience in proofreading. Tomo seems to be a perfect fit to review the website for Japan. John uses OrgChart to view Tomo's team structure and identify her manager. He speaks with him about Tomo's availability, and her manager agrees to assign her as a resource to the project. John then uses directory to identify other members for his project team, including a web designer, using the advanced search feature. Using social link, John joins the Asian Foodies group and is able to access the cultural knowledge and expertise of others who can also support his initiative. With this insight, John and his team are able to develop a more effective end solution that meets the needs of his target audience. John has also instantly expanded his social circle, helping him to become engaged with colleagues and to quickly feel at home within the company. John used Nikisa OrgChart to be more efficient, productive, and engaged within the organization. By helping him to connect with the right expertise, Nakisa Orgchart helped John achieve his business objectives starting from day one. Let's fast forward one year and see how John uses talent visualization by Nakisa to plan his career at Swift Feet Inc. Talent visualization by Nakisa includes the career planning application, which enables employees to actively shape their career and development path within their organization. John has completed many web projects successfully and has decided that he would like to advance his career. First, John reviews his current competencies, which allows him to see exactly where he is right now. Then, he uses Profile Match to find jobs he would be suitable for based on his competencies. He identifies the role of Director in the Web Marketing Job Family, for which he has a 67% match. He adds it to his preferred jobs. In the final step, John compares his current competencies with those required for his position of interest. He can clearly see the competency gaps that he has to make up in order to become eligible for the position. John shares his career and development aspirations with his manager and human resources. They work with John to construct a development plan to reach his career objective. Because they now know of his ambitions, John's manager and HR can align his development plan with the organization's future needs, helping them to build a sustainable workforce. HR also considers his career aspirations and talent assessment in Nikisa succession planning, a tool they use to strategically manage their talent pipeline. To recap, org visualization by Nikisa and talent visualization by Nikisa benefit your organization through increased workforce engagement and innovation by fostering enterprise communication and collaboration and optimizing workforce productivity by motivating top talent with career opportunities that align personal aspirations and organizational objectives. Visualization solutions by Nikisa empower your employees to contribute towards the success of your organization.
video every bit in the class everybody enjoy this video okay so that was just a small video let's get on with the class now employee relationship management that means we are talking about employee empowerment what do you mean by employee empowerment employee employee involvement appears to be a strong enabler of employee empowerment that means how you will empower empower means involve and employee involvement appears to be a strong enabler of employee empowerment unless and until you involve somewhere involve yourself somewhere you will not be that is the first to empower the first at the for the first very very first phase you have to involve yourself so it could also be defined as control or transfer of authority to make decisions and take actions yes rajiv that's right authority so it could also be defined as control or transfer of authority how would you empower somebody you will empower somebody only when you have the authority to do so then giving power to employees the freedom and ability of employees to make decisions and commitments suppose you are working in a certain team and you find that certain employee within within your team is very competent and capable enough to manage the human resource you will certainly give him the freedom and the power or you can give him the authority so that he can monitor and manage over all the employees and finally it will all show through the result which he gives to you so unless and until if if you find somebody very skillful if you find somebody very talented in your company or in your team you will definitely want to empower him and give him the authority and so as to yield the better result and in this way also you nurture the young gen younger generations or younger employees who are joining the organization so that's why employment employee empowerment is very much required then comes to employee involvement describes the prescription of an employee regarding his identity or importance in the group work he is often considered process oriented although it can be a motivational system it consists of four separate process knowledge information power and rewards so employee in, in, in involvement first describes the prescription of an employee regarding his identity or importance in the group work second is often considered process oriented although it can be a motivational system third it consists of four separate process knowledge information power and rewards that is the involvement part then comes participation what do you mean by participation a participation is a process of employee involvement designed to provide employees with the opportunity to influence and wherever appropriate take part in decision making on matters which affect them number 2 employee participation is a pluralist collective approach with a continuum from no involvement to employee control then employee involvement in contrast is more individualistic and unitarist it aims to harness commitment to organizational objectives and relies on the maintenance of management control so that is the participation participation is basically the opportunity to influence influence the decision makers as well as also to participate in the group work that is the participation part clear to all till now okay so what are the forms of employee participation employee participation comprises material and immaterial participation that what are material and immaterial participation material participation includes 
all financial participation of employees in the company such as a participation in the organization's capital profit or gain or in other forms example stock options that is the material part that means where finance is involved that is called the material participation what is the immaterial participation as employees involved in information coordination and decision process within the company that is the immaterial participation then comes the types of employee participation there are two types of as we have seen material participation and immaterial participation material participation consists of share ownership profit sharing other stock option second participation is legal co determination and voluntarily participation that means if somebody if, if there is a, some stakeholders in the company who has invested money into the company and obviously if somebody has invested money into the company they want return on that they want profit on that so definitely their participation is important that is called as the share ownership participation that means they have the share within the company and suppose employee participation if company if company on an year basis makes a profit and company decides that they will give their employees a profit share to every employee 2% profit 2% profit share to every employee suppose if that is being decided by the company so that is profit sharing that is again the material participation stock options what are the stock options suppose if there is a big company and they want to expand their business 50% is their own share and 50% share they have they have keep kept it open in the market so we we can invest in the stock market to buy some of the shares from the company so that is the stock option so the stockist or the or the or the stock person who is purchasing the stock from the market or the person who is purchasing the share of that particular company is also the has also participated has also participated so that is also called as the participation part so these are all the three material participation that means the share ownership profit sharing and stock option immaterial means where no financial concern is involved that means coordination determination legal co determination and voluntary participation basically in management role or in assisting where finance is not involved that is immaterial what are the difference in key the major difference between involvement and participation and empowerment is related to the transfer of decision making authority whereas in both involvement and participation management retains control in empowerment employee have at least some degree of authority to make and implement their own decision these are the difference in key terms clear to all till now everybody any doubts anybody wants to ask something okay moving ahead what is needed successful implementation of empowerment requires change in corporate culture why is it so because if you give power to somebody if you give authority to somebody if you empower somebody then that particular person will try to bring the change within the organization so that means since he has the power so because of that power he will try to modify something or upgrade something or enhance something within the organization so that will affect the corporate culture or organizational culture so the change can be good as well as change can be bad also so that that's why we can say that empowerment requires change in corporate culture second empowerment involves actively soliciting input from those closest to the work and giving careful thought to that input that is the empower what are the types of empowerment physiological empowerment and second is the structural empowerment what is physiological empowerment 
a process of enhancing feelings of self efficacy among organizational member through the identification of conditions that foster powerless and their removal that is the physiological empowerment that is a process of enhancing feelings of self efficacy amongst organizational members through identification of condi condition that means you have you have not involved physically but emotionally you try to empower something then comes the structural empowerment structural empowerment means defining defined as a particular set of strategies and practice to shape the workplace by managers of the organization that means your policies are very strong you set up policies and you have given allocated the authority to the managers within the organization structure wise so right from the top to the bottom of the hierarchical structure within the organization you have empowered everybody as per the as per their capabilities or as per the requirements or as per the policies of the company so that is also one type of empowerment why what are the rationale for empowerment an aspect of working smart number 1 empowerment is the key to motivation and productivity number 2 it enables a person to develop personally and professionally positive change in company and holding great responsibility to achieve a desired goal uh, prabha in what context you are asking this question you are asking something or you are telling me something then comes the what are the key difference between the traditional and empowered organization in uh, empowerment means empowerment means nothing empowerment means giving somebody empowerment means giving power to somebody empowerment means giving power to somebody giving authority to somebody so yes so authority you can also call it by the name responsibility as well so moving ahead Uh, we are seeing the difference between the traditional and the empowered organization when we talk of organizational structure in traditional organization it is layered but when we talk of empowered organization it is flat and team job design in traditional organization it is narrow single task whereas if you talk of empowered organization it is whole process or multiple task management role in traditional organization it is direct oblique control while in empowered organization it is coach oblique facilities leadership in traditional organization it is top to down and in empowered organization it is shared with the team information flow is controlled and limited in traditional organization and open and shared in empowered organization similarly rewards are individual and seniority wise in traditional organization whereas team and skill based in empowered organization when when we talk of job process its managers plan control and improve in organize in traditional organization and team plan control and improve in empowered organization so more or less we can say that empowered organization is more flexible as compared to traditional organization because in empowered organization you respect the skills you 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 prefer you give preference to skills you believe in teamwork you facilitate the man management role in the information is open and can be shared with be shared with everybody within the organization so we can say that empowered organization are more flexible as compared to the traditional organization yes it's modern approach that's right so what are the inhibitors of empowerment resistance from employees and unions resistance from management why insecurity personal values ego management training personal characteristics characteristics of managers exclusion of managers so when you give when you empower somebody or when you authority, give authority to somebody there are lot of resistance also so resistance can be from employees and unions 
and resistance can also be from the management side because when the management is insecured or because of the ego of the some senior person or because of some personal values they are not they are little bit uh, hesitant in giving authority to somebody then then comes workforce readiness and organizational structure and management practices so these all these all factors influences the empowerment in one or another way degree of empowerment job content consists consists of tasks and procedures necessary for carrying out a particular job reasons for the job and the setting in which it is done includes organization structure culture and reward systems what are the characteristics of the empowered people sense of self determination sense of meaning sense of competence and sense of impact if you empowered somebody definitely the self determination is pretty good of that particular person it is meaningful he is competent enough to hold that particular uh, portfolio and he has having impact on their work unit or on their subordinates or employees more or less stress what are the effects of empowerment on stress yes if you are empowered you are little bit stressful because you have to hold more responsibilities it depends on you how you take the stress second comes what are the effects of empowerment on performance yes if you are capable of handling stress if you are capable of handling challenges if you if you if you are capable of handling a team definitely your performance will be good what are the effects of empowerment on job satisfaction i mean if you are, if you are competent enough on taking up challenges learning new things handling team handling pressure you will have a job satisfaction otherwise no you will not have a job satisfaction what are the stages of emp empowerment no discretion the employee is assigned the task given no discretion and most likely monitored by a supervisor participatory empowerment autonomous work groups that are given some decision making authority over both job content and job context self management employees have total decision making power for both job content and job context and what are the conditions for the true empowerment there must be a clear definition of the values and mission of the company company must help employees acquire the relevant skills employees need to be supported in their decision making and not criticized when they try to do something extraordinary employees need to be recognized for their effort so these are the conditions for the true empowerment what are the management's role in empowerment and implementing empowerment management's role are commitment leadership and facilitation implementing empowerment means development of suggestion systems considering the employees point of view and putting vehicles in place management's role establishing policy setting up the system promoting the suggestion system evaluating and implementing suggestions rewarding employees this is these are the management's role for empowering somebody improving the system improving suggestion processing and improving individual suggestions evaluating suggestions though employees make suggestions final analysis is still to be made by the managers thus establish a formal rating system for evaluating suggestion systems handling poor suggestions listen carefully express appreciation carefully explain your position encourage feedback and look for compromise achieving full participation means removing hidden barriers negative barriers poor writing skills and fear of rejection and inconvenience that means you fully participate in whatever work you do encouraging new employees coaching reluctant employees that means access investigate match choose and manage how to recognize empowered employees taking initiative identifying opportunities thinking critically and building consensus 
So some some research findings and models on employee empowerment. Employee involvement consists of knowledge, information, rewards, and power, which which is related to employee empowerment, which is choice, competence, meaning, and impact. And finally, it gives the employee satisfaction. Video. Employee involvement has power. That means quality service, job enrichment, self-managed team, information, customer feedback, unit performance data, and competence data. Third, skills to analyze business strategy. Important process skills. Stay tied up with service quality individuals and group-based system. Team involvement. Is related to employee involvement and is related to employee empowerment. Employee involvement, knowledge, information, rewards, power is related to employee empowerment and is related to employee satisfaction. That brings us to the end of this particular slide. So is, is it clear to all? Am I not going fast in the class? I'm not okay. So just just relax a little bit in between. I'll I'm playing one more video for you. Just watch this video, then we can continue with for the blog. What happens when people get to participate in civic? What happens when people get to participate in civic affairs? Do they become more civic or more cynical? Do they feel empowered to participate in new organizations or do they end up feeling defeated? To answer these questions, we conducted one of the most extensive studies ever on the impact of participation. We traveled to rural Honduras and Guatemala where governments established community managed schools in the late 1990s. These are public schools in which parents take on most administrative duties, including hiring and firing teachers and deciding on budgets. They are novel experiments in both education and participatory governance. We decided to find out what happened to parents after they participated. We were looking for evidence of change in their behavior following participation, what is often described as spillover effects. We surveyed more than 2,000 parents and conducted eight case studies in rural Honduras and Alta Verapaz, Guatemala. We chose rural Honduras and Alta Verapaz precisely because they are extremely poor and thus very unlikely to show positive signs of participation. Alta Verapaz also has one of the highest proportion of indigenous population in the Americas. Our study found plenty of evidence of positive spillover effects. One, participation led to parents acquiring new skills. 77% of respondents in Guatemala and 53% in Honduras reported learning skills such as how to make a budget or organize a meeting. Two, new skills led to new applications. 34% of Guatemalan respondents and 26% of Hondurans reported applying new skills to other organizations. Three, a significant group of participants, over 25% of respondents, joined new organizations after their CMS participation. Remarkably, many people applying skills to new organizations had no prior participation experience. They displayed new forms of civicness. We did find some less fortunate outcomes. Participatory arenas remained constrained by flaws in program design, such as inadequate training for participants. Entrenched political problems, such as polarization and clientelism, also created barriers to new forms of civicness. Moreover, in Guatemala, there were very few female participants, and even fewer spillover effects among women, suggesting the prevalence of gender inequality. Our study is important because it provides reason for both optimism and caution when thinking about the promise of participation. On the one hand, participation can be generative. Participants can acquire new skills and use them to generate new forms of participation. 
and these spillovers occur even among people who have never participated before. On the other hand, spillover effects might not be large or widespread enough to undo larger barriers to civicness. In short, once initiated, participation can engender promising new forms of civicness. This might not automatically strengthen civil society or democracy, but it can help. video everybody okay so now what i'll do is i have one small the small in fact is a big one just a second there is a small article on what are the benefits of practicing employee involvement and empowerment so i'm just prabha i'm just giving you a control so just read this article just read this article everybody prabha once uh, once uh, once you are done with this page you can scroll down so that others can also read
Once you are done with this, just write on the chat box. Okay, it's done. So, do you all understand this, or do you feel feel under any problem in understanding this? Okay. Okay, there is a small, not a small, it's a big case study, 19. There are two case studies, one is on women education and empowerment and another case study is on, but it's, they are big case studies. So it's, I'll be sharing these, second case study is empowering Muslim women. So I'll be sharing these case studies after the class on coordinator at LMSRC.
so the term empowerment is giving employees power and authority to make decisions on their own when people are allowed to work with minimal interference from the superiors and are given the authority and responsibility to make decisions they are said to be empowered employees can be empowered by ensuring their participation in decision making participation is defined as the mental and emotional involvement of people in the activities of the group which encourages them take responsibility for and contribute to the achievement of group goals participation proves advantages for the organization in many ways it improves the quality and quantity of output it also improves the motivation levels of employees decreases the rate of attrition and absenteeism and improves communication within the organization other lesser tangible benefits are decreases in the number of conflicts lower stress levels great commitments to goals and low resistance to change certain prerequisites are essential for participation for instance adequate time should be allowed for participation and the possible benefits of participation should be greater than the cost involved so the most the most common participation programs are consultative management suggestion programs quality circles and total quality management middle management committees industrial democracy and self managing teams one or more of such programs can be used within the same organization consultative management refers to the practice of managers obtaining feedback and contribution from employees on certain issues for making decisions self managing teams undertake extensive group discussions and use the ideas and influence of the group for making decisions participation has a few limitations due to the complex technology and organizational structure of today's work setup some people may find it difficult to participate in different and varied organizational issues problems may also crop up when employees make suggestions in areas where they are not really competent employees may expect consultation on on every issue whether they have the relevant expertise or not and when they are not consulted they may feel resentful some superiors too may face difficulties in relating to their subordinates as they may feel that the traditional authority is threatened they may be uncomfortable in their roles as coaches and facilitators another serious drawback of participation is that it could be used to manipulate employees as well we have already done so i think i've i've covered almost everything in today's class on participation and empowerment there are two case studies but they are of 67 pages each so it's very difficult to complete that case study in today's class so i'll be mailing you all these case studies you can just get those case studies from coordinator at lmsrc and just go through to this case studies one and if you still find any problem in the case study we can take it up in the next class so shall we wind up the class now you want to ask something anybody so it's little bit too early to wind up the class today but i think whatever content i have to covered in the class i have already covered it so it's time i think we can think of winding up the class okay okay thank you all for your time hope you all enjoyed today's class on participation and empowerment and just do give your feedbacks after the class please i request everybody to fill the feedback form after the class thank you all for your time take care have a great weekend 
Bye.